moved from EA now on to Microsoft. Yes. Who opened with the most anticipated IP return since, um, I don't know, the McRib? Probably. Shamrock Shake McRib. Battletoads! Battle Toads that was cool. Team. <laughs> this was yeah, a rumor, rumor. Um, uh, and I, I, I think Pete was wearing this shirt for Battle Toads two years ago when they yeah, did a yeah. Microsoft presentation, and everyone lost it and said, Battle Toads is coming back, and uh, and yes, Battle Toads is coming back next year. You'll be able to play Battle Toads three player, not four, three player, mm -hmm. because four is Ninja Turtles, three is Battle Toads. Uh, <laughs> I was obviously I was, completely obviously different. yeah uh, happy about it uh, I think that I'm hoping that in my wish list that it will be very challenging but there will be modes that are easier or ways to play it that are easier because Battletoads is one of the hardest games and I'm hoping that I'm hoping this isn't another Cuphead because Cuphead is wonderful but it it isn't enough to get anyone but the hardcore players. And I'm yep. hoping this gets more people than that. Um, but Xbox announced they had 50 game premieres, okay? So some of these were console premiere exclusives, or console launch exclusives, meaning the game comes out first on Xbox, then will go elsewhere. There were some um, brand new uh, games that were never before release. So basically every 60 to 70 seconds you heard world premiere. Like every single, like just, just over and over, or or uh, you know, world console launch premiere, like every minute, minute and a half, yeah. and it it didn't get like repetitive because it was it was like I was on a roller coaster that never had never let up. Um, Honestly, it was intense. This was my favorite conference. Yeah, I, I heard when, most people I heard say it was their favorite conference. Um, and said, this is how you do a conference. It was an hour and 40 minutes, I think. Uh, really? Just, it was, it was something like that. Or now I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of something else. It was ridiculously long time uh, uh, for, for doing that. It was over an hour. I think maybe it was an hour and a half, but lots of new games, lots of, lots of new games, lots of games that are sequels and stuff. Uh, we'll just yeah. go through these as we go because there's so much to talk about. Uh, Devil May Cry 5, uh, which is coming out in spring 2019. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've kind of... <laughs> they went out with DMC4 and they, they had, like, here's the hip new guy. And now with Devil May Cry 5, they're like, hey, don't remember that guy. Never seen that, him before. That's not the hip new guy? Because I hate that guy's haircut. Right. They're, they're going back to the previous Dante. So... Oh, yeah. Whichever guy was in this trailer, I thought he looked like a like a tool, because it didn't look like the previous Dante. Anyways, well, Dante is kind of a tool if you're okay. honest. But anyway, so so we're getting that spring 2019, yeah. and the game looks exciting. amazing. The graphics look amazing. Uh, the um, uh, the the mo uh, you're, and I, I'm going to talk about this about when it comes to other games as well. But the how far we've come when it comes to. Uh, like facial animation when it, when when people are discuss are talking yeah. is just blowing my mind in a game that I didn't think would be really concentrating on that. Mm -hmm. There are some games that need to concentrate on that uh, that Bethesda needs to work on. Uh, but in regard, and I know Bethesda games are just massive. I understand the undertaking, but the the character modeling and the attitude from whoever the, the girl was in this that was talking was. Like it took me off, it like caught me off guard uh, in, in regards to some of it. So um, I'm excited about it in regards to seeing how it goes. It's not necessarily my series. Uh, and I'm sorry, I apologize about notifications. Hopefully those will stop. Um, but then we got, uh, or this is not in the exact order, I don't think, uh, but uh, God of War. Gears. Three, Gears of War. Why did I say that? Gears of War, I was thinking about someone else, but I was not saying it. Anyways. Gears of War. We got three Gears of War games. Mm -hmm. If you had told me they're going to have three Gears of War games, I would have said, how? Like, yeah. exactly how is that going to happen? Um, actually, it looks like I'm getting an alert about storage, so give me just one second. Um, so while he's doing that, I'll, I'll kind of run down the, the Gears of War games. We have um, the next Gears of War is going to have a new protagonist, Kate. Um, she's she's been kind of in the shadows. She's been a part of the crew, but now she's she's stepping up. She's taking uh, taking lead 
and uh, so we see her interacting a little bit with Marcus, and she she says, "Okay, this death means something to me. I'm gonna find out what's happening." Yeah, uh, kind of disobeying orders, and you know we expect our heroes to do that. Um, the second one was a, a Gears of War like chibi version, and it's like a it it, it has Pop. some kind of tie in with Funko Pop. Yeah, so like Funko imagine Pops. Funko Pop plus Gears equals <laughs> hilarity. So yeah. that that looked like a lot of fun. And then the last one was basically an XCOM style game mm -hmm. where Gears of War was going to have, you know, a move by move, which makes perfect sense for a cover shooter because the thing that Gears of War has always done incredibly well is is the the switch between active combat and, and hiding, finding mm -hmm. tactical places to be, moving one position at a time, things like that. And that is that is excellent for an XCOM style game. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And I believe they said, um, I don't have it in my notes, so I'll correct this in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe Gears of War was actually the second one to be doing um, a, a Battle Royale. So I will check on that, but I think this is number two. Yeah, either way, lots of Battle Royale. Apologies, I th should be good now. Um, there's been so much content going on that, uh, that I have a solid state uh, hard drive and completely filled it up uh, with, I think it was two, over 200 gig of video from E3. So now we should be cleared up and we should be okay. Um, after the, the Gears of War stuff, which was surprising, um, but I'm, I'm glad when they first said had the Funko thing, I was really annoyed. Uh, when they had the other uh, XCOM-ish thing, I was not as annoyed, but I was really worried that they weren't going to give they weren't going to give us a real Gears of War, proper Gears of War game. And then they did. So yeah, happy about that. Um, speaking of that, okay, so confirmed, Gears of War uh, Five is going to have a uh, a battle royale mode. So there you go. That's two. I, that's two. More to come. Uh, then we got Halo Infinite, which... Yes. Which works out really well for my prediction. Because I said it will not be Halo 6. You did. And, and I, I said correct. not Halo. I didn't because say Infinite. Halo 6. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Infinite yeah. is not 6. And I think that um, they... I don't know if they're going to go away from, from the numbers or if they're going to... Um, if this well, is an offshoot, they've had, a, they've had a couple in the past that ODST have like, like the Reach and, and ODST, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so this is this is not something entirely out of the ordinary, and it makes sense that after the way that, uh, in particular, the first, uh, the single player version of Five was was heavily maligned, yeah. and it it was really difficult. But they they have confirmed that in Halo Infinite you will have split screen multiplayer because they noticed that hey, guess what? People want to do that. Yeah, I've people, always wanted to do yeah, that. The the sales did not, they did not. The sales did not go the way they wanted them to go. It wasn't a dud, but they definitely did not sell as much as they wanted because of that. Uh, companies yeah. are doubling down on multiplayer, online multiplayer. Guess what? Online multiplayer is fun, but there are certain games that lend themselves very well and traditionally are played couch co-op, and Halo is one of them. Uh, yeah. ha happy about that. Uh, we also got uh, Just Cause Four, which yeah, we did. I'm happy about, but I the entire time I was thinking you need to hook my attention with this game, and it looks good, but I uh, I think Far Cry has been doing a really good job with this, where they're like, hey, we got a new Far Cry game, here's the weird villain and weird stuff that you're gonna deal with, and I was yeah. like, yeah, and Far and uh, Just Cause instead was like, okay, Just Cause Four is coming out, we got tornadoes. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. it, to me. I'm. I, I, this is again going in my my. Uh, if it's on crazy sale for a for a Christmas thing, I will yeah. buy it. I'm not going to buy this at launch. I will see what happens with it, uh, because the, as a sandbox, this game is great. This franchise is wonderful as a sandbox, but I got so many things going on right now. They did not we, hook we, me in regards to the sandboxes. We have lots of sandboxes, and they didn't hook me to say this is why this sandbox is cool, is, is better, because I didn't understand the story and antagonist enough to be hooked. Where yeah. uh, Far Cry, every single as Far Cry three, four, and five have all 
uh, drawn my attention as saying like, here's, yeah, this is the, uh, yeah, this is the thing. This is why you should be excited about it. Yeah, this and, didn't and do that. The, and the antagonists have also been really interesting. And in just caught in just cause four, it's just, oh, there's a dictator somewhere being awful to his people. Like, they they are caricatures rather than characters. Correct. And Correct. Far Cry does a really good job of blurring that line between caricatures and characters. Yeah. Because um, Pagan Men is a psycho. Yes. <laughs> but but you can also appreciate why he does what he does and, yeah. and a, a relatable, understandable antagonist will hook me every time. You have a protagonist move the story if you're able to bring in an antagonist that I can relate to. Yeah. Now, if you can do both, awesome. But yeah. nail the antagonist, and and Just Cause Four does not do that for yeah. me. We got most coming of that. out to. It's, we got most of that, but you're getting your uh, feed is um, your audio is getting chopped. Okay. Hope just I, it's it, it's enough. It's enough that I think we got we got the gist of it though. Okay. It's just apologies for the for the blip there. Uh, I'm not gonna have time to edit everything though. <laughs> All right, sorry. We also got Cyberpunk 2077. Mm -hmm. uh, no gameplay, but uh, progress on how they're doing and that that game is still in development, and the world looks amazing. Very, it's it's pretty. It's um, very uh, Blade Runner. But even like Blade Runner and uh, what was the other um, that I'm thinking of? Ghost in the Shell, Ex Machina, like mash that all up. And that's how I felt watching this. Um, yeah. I'm still, uh, I think that they've hooked me in regards to their world. Now I'm curious to see uh, more about the game. And that's really what they wanted to do here. They teased it and said, hey, we're working on this. Look how cool this is. And I said, yes, that is cool. I like it. <laughs> so it worked. Succeeded. Yes. Um, so we also got, uh, sorry, we talked about uh, Dying Light 2 um, mm -hmm. uh, earlier, but Dying Light 2, no release date yet, but yeah, looks good. Uh, they talked a little bit more about, about the environment, uh, and they discussed, uh, I'm probably going to, I apologize if I mix this up. This is the one where they were talking about uh, the expanding... Uh, choices, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So they were talking about like there's because dying light zombie-ish things, right? And there are people in there, and depending on what choices that you make, uh, is going to influence, uh, you know, like for instance, who's getting clean water or how the power grid works. Uh, right. Because... You're, you're you're kind of trying to rebuild a a safer area yes. for people, yes. and so that you can kind of unite people and and create a a a front against what happens in the night. And I like yeah. that idea. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it is very similar to uh, game design that I was, uh, design doc that I was working on a few years ago. Uh, and I'm, or sorry, a few years ago, 10 years ago at this point. Um, but it was a game, des game doc that I was, that I was designing that was like, that I would wanted to pitch, but didn't have the skill set to do video games and to just yeah. say, hey, I got a game idea. No one's going to listen to you. Um, but that's okay. It's 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 generic enough that it's not like you stole my idea. It's like it's just in depth yeah. enough. Now we're now we're where I wanted to be when I was going to pitch that game. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'm ready. I'm excited about it. I'm I'm ready to watch and see what else is going on with this game. Yeah. Um, they also showed a, a pretty good chunk of indies. Um, mm -hmm. Out of out of the ones that they showed, uh, one of the ones that jumped out at me was one called Tunic. And it's like kind of an isometric uh, top-down game that has. It looks like a. It looks like a. a <laughs> it looks like the Link to the Past perspective yeah. on a game written in Wind Waker. So it's it's like kind of mashing those two art styles together, yeah. and you've got an. Uh, anthropomorphic fox who is your protagonist and he's running around chopping down you know chopping down grass and throwing you know pots that's that's what heroes do right that's exactly what heroes do so that's that's what every hero does so that that game looks really interesting yeah that so did. i'm gonna keep my eye on it uh we got also got was it called sekiro sekiro Sekiro, yeah. So uh, coming to <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation, uh, which is, as 
Kevin is uh, fangirling over here, uh, new Miyazaki. So very <laughs> happy about that. Um, this, uh, which took, took me a second as I was like going through our notes, I was like, Sekiro, which, oh yeah, this is Shadows Die Twice. This mm -hmm. is this is what um, we, we thought, we weren't sure if it was going to be a Tenshu game or what it was, because they, they put out some very cryptic um, stuff coming out. And this is one of three samurai-ish games coming out. Mm -hmm. So so we're going to try to make sure we we discuss them in a very distinct way so you understand. This is this is by the team uh this is by uh, from software. This is the uh Miyazaki who did uh Dark Souls and Bloodborne and this looks to me like uh it is more traditional Japanese but it does have the the darkness that Miyazaki really really pulls into games yeah. uh, and, and is in the very weird creature designs. Uh, but it is crazy, over-the-top, fast action, which... Very much so. And and especially considering that um, the, the fact that, um, like in Bloodborne, we didn't have shields. And so we needed to step up our speed in combat yeah. and our reaction time and things like that. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't just plod lazily forward, wait to get hit, and then yeah. try to counter. This and is so faster. And this I, is faster I, than that. Did you say and this is faster than Bloodborne? It's faster than Bloodborne. Yeah. And, and so it has a grappling hook. Like Did you see the grappling moving, hook? They're moving the bar. Yeah. Did you and see the I'm grappling so hook? I'm so excited about it. Yes. There's, so, there's a grappling hook. At one point, he like he like flings it somewhere and then like wraps it around his foot and then yeah. yanks and somehow, don't ask me about the physics, propels himself like 20 feet up onto the top of something. And, yeah. and that kind of traversal looks like it's going to be so much fun. And I can't wait to be fighting a boss where where he starts to come at me, he starts to charge, and I can like grapple hook over here, yeah. grapple hook over here, and then like midway through, just like stab down on his tail or something. Like, I'm really excited about the, the new combat that this offers because um, this combat looks very different than what we've seen in other From games. Exactly. And, and that is all kinds of exciting because mm -hmm. even with the differences between the combat systems in different From games, it is consistently rewarding yep, of exactly. a system to master. And I, and I cannot wait. And th this was shown on Microsoft stage, but we have confirmed that it is coming to, to PlayStation and PC uh, early 2019. Yep. So that's what I will be playing early 2019. Yep, uh, we're we're both in the same boat on that. When these when these type of games come out, that's what we do. Um, mm -hmm. There there there's so much exploration uh, and and new and being part of that community is wonderful at the start. Uh, I do like doing it afterwards as well because you get some really cool stuff like checklists and cool things. But but being part of the community and discussing like what does this mean and what is this. Is really yeah. is really fun. Um, we also, uh, in a complete tonal shift, we got uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, <laughs> which Ori and the Blind Forest was wonderful. Uh, we didn't get a lot of information on this, but I thought I think Ori is endearing, or Ori's uh, um, very. Uh, there's a lot of heart in Ori and the Blind yeah. Forest. So, and this is like this it. is the second time we've been shown this game, but the first time we got to see gameplay. Correct. So Correct. that was that was really exciting. We still don't have a release date for it, but they did say that it was going to be early 2019. Yeah. And oh my goodness, early 2019 is so stacked with games. Yeah. And and speaking of that, uh, Metro Exodus is coming out February 26th, joining Anthem and Days Gone. So whatever you want to play, you've got something coming out that day. And uh, do you do you follow uh, CEO Kazurai? No. Okay. So he he's a parody account that uh, that pretends to be one of the former heads of PlayStation. No. Okay. <laughs> and he said he said. We've chosen to launch Days Gone on the same day as Anthem so that you'll have something to play when the servers inevitably crash. <laughs> oh, it's true. That's and true. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, uh, just like playing an MMO or anything like that that's online-centric uh, to this point, uh, that's going to have that problem. Uh, Fallout's going to have the same problem when Fallout for, uh, 76 comes out. Uh, I am hoping... Well, actually, I'll, go, I'll talk about that later. Um, we also got some news about Cuphead DLC, uh, yes. which is coming out uh, again, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, ad additional, an, an additional island, which means you're going to have more, like, basically plus one more third of the game or one half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, an additional character as well to be able to play mm -hmm. uh, as uh, Miss like Miss Chalice or something. Miss Chalice. Chalice. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So that that's cool. Um, 
I don't know how many players are really wanting more Cuphead. I I I, I liked Cuphead for a while, and then it just mm-hmm. got just ridiculously challenging to the point where I wasn't having fun anymore. And all it was like if all you yeah. did in in Dark Souls was just do diff- different boss fights, and there was no exploration. <laughs> That's how I yeah. felt. Yeah. Um, one thing that I I was kind of surprised by is that they didn't actually show any new bosses. Nope. Just so, that's happening. They did. So like when, when, when these games come out, like uh, when Cuphead came out, I, I went ahead and spoiled myself. I went and I was like boss by boss by boss by boss, just watching their attack patterns because when you're actually playing, yeah, you can't really, you don't have time yeah. to look yeah. at the boss and go, oh, his scales are so pretty. Don't you love the way that he puffs up his chest before he breathes fire? Whereas yeah. when you're playing, it's ah, fire, ah, lightning, ah, water, ah, I'm gonna yeah. fall. Oh, I it's died. True. It's true. And Cuphead, the 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 hand anim- hand drawn animation on it is just so pretty. Um, that that's what that's what drew me to Cuphead. And yeah. um, I mistakenly had Whitney play it. And uh, Ooh. that was that was I didn't know I didn't know I just I just saw the tra- I just saw trailers <laughs> and I didn't know how difficult it was I went into it blind and I thought well she loves the merry melodies and the old school yeah, hand- yeah, oh, animation the, the animation the animation is fantastic yeah but that's but it's ridiculously hard uh, speaking of uh, well actually no I wouldn't say ridiculously hard speaking of great animation if you will but in a different kind uh near automata's uh definitive edition ultimate edition i can't remember the name of it it's definitive yeah. edition uh is coming to xbox of uh, all the dlc and everything on it which is which is great because more people need to play this game um it's, uh, when it was it, just, it just when it was just three. on yeah do what i think it just cost crossed uh, was it three million in uh, PlayStation? Yeah, that was, that was actually what I was going to say, is is just on the PlayStation platform yeah. alone, it sold 3 million copies. Yeah. So it's it's one of those that's like, um, maybe it's not in the main gaming uh, discussions, sure. but in in any group of, of, you know, 10, 15 gamers, you're going to have one guy that goes, dude, you got to play Nier. Nier yeah. is amazing. And mm-hmm. then I've got I've actually got two people like that in my life, and I'm like, I'll I'll get to it. Yeah. I promise. I did like the mix of styles in Nier, because um, Nier mm-hmm. does go between uh, uh, different gameplay modes very uh, smoothly and very versatile. Uh, the story is great, the anime and the uh, the visuals are wonderful as well. Uh, and then we had uh, some what I, I did not expect this at all, but the very end of the conference. Um, uh, we had an announcement that Xbox has acquired five studios. And they didn't just say, we have acquired five studios. They just kept saying, oh yeah, we also did this. Oh yeah, we also did this. Um, yeah. They acquired Playground. They mm-hmm. acquired Undead Labs. Uh, and I, I went ahead and pulled up what they've done because okay. some people don't recognize Go ahead, sure. Uh, Playground is the one that does the Forza games, which that is, that is a perfectly logical acquisition. Yep. Um, Undead Labs does the State of Decay games, which have been um, they have been on Xbox for a while, and so they have been exclusive, but they haven't been like locked down into that into that uh, series. And then um, you had Ninja Theory, which yep. did forever ago. They did Heavenly Sword, but they do um, they've basically taken over the Ninja Gaiden series, and they do a lot of other things that are a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, Compulsion Games are the ones who do. Who did We Happy Few? Yes. Um, I, I I hope that one's still coming to to PlayStation. It's been announced for PlayStation, but um, We Happy Few is is one of those very bizarre dystopian games, and I I, I appreciate the fact that that Microsoft is looking to acquire these different kind of games because yeah. when 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 you and I talk about how how uh, Microsoft's per- first party offering and exclusives offering mm-hmm. is is a little lackluster. We don't necessarily mean that they have to have two more AAA tentpole hundred million yeah. dollar uh, artifacts. Like Cuphead is something that absolutely belongs as as a as a positive to to the uh, Microsoft infrastructure I because agree. it's like they they found a developer who was doing something different, doing yeah. something outside of the norm, and they said, mm-hmm. "Hey, you know what? We like what you're doing. We want to support you." come play on xbox and xbox got an exclusive that way that is a different experience that you can't get anywhere else exactly and and 
And as much as I hate exclusives, especially for consoles I don't own, as much as I hate exclusives, that's the way to handle this. And so well done to Microsoft for for stepping up and with all the mm-hmm. with all the talk surrounding them about how they're not respecting first party, how their exclusives yeah. are, are dead or whatever. This this is a bold move to acquire mm-hmm. these four studios and create a new one to yeah. to just go out and be like, okay, what can we do for gamers who are looking for unique and special experiences? Yep. And I, I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Yep. And uh, I would say the way, while we don't like exclusives, uh, I they're the easiest way for people who are more casual gamers who don't listen to podcasts of people talking about video games for hours um for us to say what's the you know which one should i get xbox or playstation well this has this and this has this because if i start going into a tirade about how bethesda usually usually optimizes their games for (laughs) xbox i'm gonna lose everybody yeah Uh, yeah i'm gonna lose everybody in that case but in this case yeah that's that's the best way to explain it Thanks for watching this week in our collective heads. Uh, subscribe over here and click the bell. And that way you'll know about any new videos that we put up because we put up a lot of uh, gameplay, a lot of stories from games and stuff like that. And gameplay is down here. Yeah, and you got more editorials and new stuff down here. Check it out.